Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and I don't know if it's my previous build being Chainhook here talking, but it feels pretty damn good to play Burning Arrow right now. I made a Burning Arrow at the uh, end of last league as a trickster in a similar sort of fashion to this character and played it quite profusely, especially against all uh, the boss at the bottom of Delve or somewhere near the bottom of Delve. And uh, it was a very good character. I liked it a lot, but I wanted to try and take a bit more of an unconventional approach this time around and go with a Hope Shredder and stack all of my Ignite damage off of Cold damage. So the way it still works is... You are essentially just adding cold damage onto your fire damage. Don't really worry about what's cold, what's burn, what's not, because none of that really changes. It's just purely you wear Crimburn gloves, and then it means that whatever additional cold damage you have to your build also helps you burn uh, enemies as though it was fire damage. That's pretty much all it does. It's as simple as that. So we're using a Hope Shredder, which is a bow I've never used before because it's always seemed a bit too inconvenient and it still might be a bit too inconvenient, but it's working out rather nicely so far anyway. Um, and then the new helm from um, Delirium, which is called a Salem. Now, unfortunately, there isn't much ingenuity going on with what I'm doing. It's simply kind of just put in a Delirium helm and a Salem, and your build's going to get a lot better if you are using something with damage over time. So that includes bleed, that includes poison, that includes ignite. And if you are unfamiliar with what the Asylum Helm does, is it grants you a skill called Snipe, which incorporates your previous skills. So you'll notice that I'm actually pretty rarely using it. I'm running around just right clicking a lot, uh, which is just burning arrow um, clear speed. But right now, in these sorts of boss fights, I bust out the Snipe skill. It turns your whatever skill you put into there into kind of a scourge arrow wind up you can wind up to six stacks of this skill and then unleash and it takes a little bit of time to get there so it does make you into a channeled skill user for the sake of boss fights if you want to maximize your damage what happens is you put a burning arrow in there a puncture something like that for scaling and uh, then you still have three other links left to go for other um, damage over time scaling but for every stack that you gain while charging up you get a huge multiplier in damage over time and it essentially saves you a few links but actually it's also much more powerful than that uh, if we take my previous Burning Arrow character uh, from Metamorph, the Trickster, it had about a million tooltip or path of building um, damage over time, ignite damage. And if you get rid of two links and then put that entire setup into an Asylum, we now have something like 7 million damage. So there's kind of a discrepancy there with um, what's happening and how powerful this item is and how much skill is going into making it work because it's kind of just insane and the only real downside is that you have to stand still and wind up for six seconds or not six seconds up to six charges and it is based off your attack speed so you can make it pretty quick and uh, in some boss fights yes it's going to be tough to get it up to the entirety of its charge and you can see that a huge thick map like this one, this is um, double beyonded, sextanted, uh, scarabed, all through and through as juicy as it can be. We don't even use the Asylum Helm. It doesn't factor in. It's only actually necessary for boss fights, but that's the one thing that has kind of been lacking in Ignite builds in the past uh, couple years or so. It's the single target damage. You could always get some good clear speed going, but your single target was, while respectable, never very good. Uh, now it can actually be extremely good. Likewise with um, the Puncture Bleed and probably with um, the Poison versions as well. You can get some serious ailments going with this helm and uh, it just feels a little bit cheesy, but it is a lot of fun. So if you have the desire doing some damage over time uh, range stuff, well worth looking into with this helm, especially since it's basically worthless right now and uh, pretty common to go out there and find yourself even. Uh, so I do want to try and make something a bit different here, which is why I went with cold damage and then a hope shredder using a Hari's Ire. Going to get this trickster, which is um, largely based off of dodge and evasion, up to something like five and a half thousand life, a bunch of damage reduction, and then on top of that, like 60 uh, dodge, spell dodge, uh, 
bunch of evasion as well. So it should in the end feel pretty damn nice. And as you may have noticed running around throughout this map, there's a lot going on and I basically take no damage ever because we are very evasive. And I think it's going to be a very, uh, or potentially my nicest clear speed character for the league, though I have had a couple of decent ones already. This is uh, just melting through maps and monsters. And then hopefully if the single target holds up as much as it should, given that Asylum can be pretty busted, it might end up being a character I play for quite a bit longer than the others and one that I take into full-blown delirium maps. I'm yet to do that because it's never felt good enough. None of my builds have been busted enough. We'll just cross our fingers and hope this is the one. So I want to show you guys how I've built it and what's going on in the build so far. So here's a character called Indecisive, level 87 trickster. Uh, snipe, indecisive. I was very indecisive as to whether I was sticking in the cold route or going a full fire traditional burning arrow route, which isn't something that is too often seen. It's usually storm fire uh, and lightning at the moment. But I have committed fully into the cold sort of build and it is based around Hope Shredder, which is uh, just a bunch of cold damage, some good attack speed, some movement speed for your frenzies, a bit more um, cold damage. But the penalty is, of course, that you take cold damage per second per frenzy while moving. We currently have four frenzy charges and uh, it's not a huge amount of cold damage, especially once you're capped on resists. Um, it ends up being nothing too serious. So you can see once we have one frenzy and we start moving, you can take some a bit of damage. And the idea is to just uh, out regen it through your own life regen, your um, stone golem, your leech, and as well as that, a bunch of life gain on kill through trickster uh, down here, which gives you a lot, and then cinder swallow. So we do have a lot of life on kill. But on top of that, a lot of the time when you are doing your damage, you are standing still and going for your snipe. So you're not actually moving and at that point you're not taking any extra damage anyway and we're also trying to combine it with um this pantheon here which gives you 50 percent increased recovery of rate if you stop taking damage over time recently which should be a lot of the time so whenever we have frenzy charges and we stop for just a split second um, you should get that extra bonus regen uh, since we aren't taking damage anymore from hope shredder for just the faintest or splittest of seconds so we've got these combined with Rimburn Gloves. So like I said, your cold damage can ignite. It's nothing too complicated, though it might sound like it. Your fire damage still deals fire. Uh, your burn is still just fire damage. Ignite is still fire damage. The only thing this does is mean that any added cold damage um, is acted as fire as well. So you can see here, we've got quite a lot of um, cold damage, about a 50-50 split at the moment because Burning Arrow to begin with has a uh, large, or rather the entirety of its uh, damage converted to fire. And then I've also got a bunch of additional fire throughout my build as well. So it's about a 50-50 split at the moment, but um, the cold does help us get there quite a bit easier thanks to the uh, Hope Shredder the Hyrie's Ire, which is almost worth an entire link by itself, but not quite these days, um, and just some cold damage in loose places. But I'm trying to make Hope Shredder work. Honestly, if you just did a pure fire version, it'd be somewhat similar in the end, I think. You're not gonna lose too much damage, um, even just pure fire damage stacking, but the idea would be to do a big physical bow. You could do a Zoth's Nurture, though I don't think that's particularly worth it because it won't help uh, that seven link won't help your helm at all. Uh, but yeah, just a bunch of physical damage. And then you can have room for like a combs instead of going a dodge and evasion based route. You just go a pure life stacking route, hit like seven or eight K life and uh, call that a day instead. But we're going with this one because never done Hope Shredder and really do want to make it work. And then the other big key item is Asylum. So you can see here, Grant's level 20 snipe. Uh, it says non-channeling bow skills are triggered by snipe. So you put any non-channeling skill, for example, Scourge Arrow channels, so you can't chuck it in here. And then it is triggered uh, whenever your snipe goes off, whenever you have at least one stage of this thing and it deals 165% more damage with um, ailments. Uh, uh, sorry, 120 more with um, ailments, 165 more with hits. But the main thing is ailments. So you charge it up. As soon as it gets to six stacks, you're multiplying that by six times. And it's a huge extra multiplier that you can kind of see over here. 
um, if we're looking at our Ignite DPS. The Ignite DPS is at about 2.4 million at the moment, but the total damage for the Ignite is well over 10 million, and that's um, quite a bit higher than my previous build uh, for single target anyway. Uh, so it does take a good five seconds or so to deal all your damage, but typically it's a very smooth playstyle to be able to deal this much DPS because you just fire it up, play, or shoot, and then you can actually run around and let that damage do its damage, and it's very reliable and very strong. So Ignite builds do always feel pretty reliable on single target. And we still got more to get because uh, a lot of my damage is coming from cluster jewels, and I'm still trying to fill out a cluster over here, but uh, there'll be a little bit more room for improvement. And ultimately, we'll land at about 12 million, maybe 11 million per Ignite, which two and a half to three million Ignite DPS, which is very strong, reliable damage. Uh, so currently, the build goes a bit of everywhere. We're trying to grab Acro. We are probably going to get Phase Acro in the end. Uh, I went down this way so I could get some attack speed to feel a bit better about the channel and all that. This is something I might drop in the end uh, once I've got the appropriate cluster stuff. And... Um, then you're just traveling to pick up elemental overload, bit of life, bit of fire dot over time. But our clusters do a lot of our fire dot over time um, and sort of uh, minus max stuff as well. So these um, little fire clusters currently have a bit of fire damage over time, but it's mostly things like cooked alive. So I'm stacking these as much as possible to negate the need for elemental equilibrium because this type of build can't do elemental equilibrium and neither can a pure fire burning arrow, uh, or at least not conveniently. Uh, only the Stormfire versions and uh, Tempest Bow do um, elemental equilibrium very easily. So then we've got another one over here, Cooked Alive, and I've also got Fan the Flames. So this is the Prolif that we need in our build, uh, saving us on the Prolif gem. And it also helps our single target do a bit of Prolif if it needs to. Uh, and then up here, once again, Blowback and Cooked Alive. Uh, not necessarily sure it's the best way to build. This is how I've just gone. Uh, all these cooked alives, though, do help quite a lot um, for the damage when you don't have elemental equilibrium. Chances are the pure lightning version is still going to be the best one to build. Or potentially, if you invest a lot in your bow and overall upgrade, a really strong physical bow could be uh, the best version of a burning arrow. But this cold one seems to be working pretty nicely. Uh, crushing all content up to tier 10, including uh, all the double beyond it and stuff. And I don't see any reason it's going to slow down in the higher tiers. So hopefully I'll be able to test it out on proper delirium maps and all that. But um, yeah, we're just trying to see if the cold version can do anything so that this bow actually does something for a change as opposed to uh, get vended for a few alk shards. So the links in our current um, clear Burning Arrow is Burning Arrow with the Vial version that you use for additional single target from time to time, Combustion, Deadly Ailments, uh, Awaken Burning, GMP, and Ellie Damage with Attacks. And then in the Asylum, we've got uh, Burning Arrow, Awakened Deadly Ailments, Awakened Burning Damage, Awakened Unbound Ailments. All three of these Awakened things are like 5C a piece. They're absolutely worthless, but they are very strong. Um, if you get the quality on them as well. Uh, so I do recommend that. I'm still deciding what to do in my chest over here. It's probably going to be a storm brand with some utility, like maybe a curse on hit, maybe a uh, crit for elemental overload, maybe some blind action, something like that. Uh, down here, I've just got a stone golem, still leveling another stone golem. No big deal there. Blood rage, which I'm typically not using anymore because I get all of my frenzies I need from my Ascendancy, and then Malevolence, Enlighten, and Anger. Since I'm running two auras at the moment, uh, it's only really worth doing because I picked up a Watcher's Eye that has damage over time multi with Malevolence, and then a bit of fire damage with Anger. Um, the fire damage with Anger isn't super important. It's a bit of extra damage, but uh, by no means is it carrying this build. If I didn't have this exact Watcher's, I was probably going to run Herald of Ice, but it's still better to do Anger in this sort of combo that I've done. If you wanted to, instead, you could do like an Aspect of the Spider and a Herald of Ice and a Malevolence. That's probably going to be more output than my sort of situation anyway, but got the Watcher's Eye, so I wanted to use it. Uh, and then you grab a Deity and Dawn that's got 20 Ellie damage attached to it so that you get slightly faster burns um, on your build. You grab a flammability on hit ring if you want to clear a bit better, but it's not super important because you can do self-cursing on bosses otherwise. 
and then I'm just trying to fill out resists and a bit of damage in the rest of my gear. Fire damage over time multi on a hunter amulet, which I used um, scorching fossil spam to achieve. And once again, scorching fossil spam to achieve this one for fire damage over time multi. And that's about it. We have to fill out resists um, a little bit through the passive tree, a little bit through jewels, uh, but not too much. A lot of the resists are just random pieces of gear and it's pretty easy to cap resists in the end uh, even though i thought it was going to be rather tough since uh we do use one two three four well four uniques to begin with and then this one here as a uh, another unique but it does have good resists uh we then run dying sun for convenience uh cinder swallow for damage and quality of life but you can see that additional arrows do help for your snipe which makes it a little bit less clumsy for single target. So if we have our Dying Sun up, it does split out three arrows. If you're only doing one arrow at a time, in some boss fights, it might be a bit tough to get your snipe off, uh, might get overwhelmed. So it's something you've got to keep in mind. For now though, I think that's all I'll say about the build. That's quite a lot to talk about already. Uh, hopefully I've got a good positive overview for the end game in the next video on this character. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.